dungeon diving, this beginner box. I'm sure that this cave system still holds many mysteries for all of you. Of course. Who have definitely never played through this before. <laughs> at this point, I feel... How many of you have actually played this at this point? Like... I, I haven't. I, yeah, I actually I have not either. Oh, is it... So is it just... It's just Sam? I think, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then we can still maintain a... Slight air of mystery. Potence of mystery, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, hang on, let me just turn off the relaxing coffee shop jazz ambience that I have going in the background. It's not very fitting for this situation. I think on our end it's just drones in the deep playing. Yeah. No, I, I, appropriate. That's more appropriate. I just had some, some YouTube thing playing, but... There we go. All right. So, it's been some time. Um, but when last we left off with these four intrepid heroes, we were exploring a system of caves beneath the seaside town of Otari on the island of Kortos. And what started as a simple vermin extermination to uh, to slay whatever beastie was stealing the fish out of the fishery cellar has blown up into a uh, full-scale dungeon crawl with tunnels leading beneath the streets and into a series of ruins that you have found. Ruins infested with a variety of dangers, but most prominently kobolds, of which you have just slain an entire warren's worth in this chamber. It looks like it used to be some sort of old dining hall or or something. There's an old table down here, um, but it's been taken over by the kobolds and transformed, transformed into a little nesting area with these nooks on the eastern wall where you can see uh, some moldy looking straw bedding as well as cushions, pillows, and, and threadbare blankets that have been laid out. There is a path that leads ahead of you to the north. Uh, obviously, a section of the wall that has broken in and stone has kind of come crumbling down and into this room over time, forming a gentle slope up into the darkness beyond um, but just as a as a, a reminder since it has been some time since we've all been here uh, you did come down into this uh, this section of uh, the ruins uh, through several other chambers um, one of which contained a large mermaid fountain that attacked you Oh, I had forgotten about that. Right. And uh, that, that, that we haven't disabled, if I no. remember correctly. No. I remember correctly. You have not disabled it. You simply we, 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 ran we away failed, from it. We failed forward. I think is what. We failed yes. forward. <laughs> um, and prior to that, you would come into a room. You had been ambushed by a couple of kobolds in that room, but you dealt with them both swiftly. Um, and you did see that there was like. A section of wall that had broken down as if there was uh, a, another tunnel leading off um, although it had been filled in and barricaded with barrels that had been kind of stacked up and and uh, blocked up the passageway so that is the gist and this, this tunnel is heading back up 
Uh, sure. I'm not sure it has it back up, but it surely goes up somewhere. Like Anthony mentioned that that it slopes upward. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit of an incline. I mean, it's only like a few feet up, but okay, but it's but we're not going. We're not going further down. Correct. Okay. So Valeros is kind of you know kind of poke the cobalt remains with his the tip of his sword and maybe lift them up with his foot seeing if there's any any coins rolling out of their pockets anything that looks interesting among their gear and he's gonna say well next time Ezrin maybe you shouldn't be the first one in the room I should it but note he didn't call I you old friend I recall correctly you are not extra cobalt food because of me. Uh, I guess there's some, some truth to that, but we wouldn't have even been on the menu if it wasn't for you either. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's keep moving. Indeed. Um, Melchis also will try to, to see if uh, there are uh, any usable ammunition left among the cobalt, because I think I will keep using my hand crossbow and I'm running well on both. <clears throat> well, uh, the kobolds in this room uh, did not seem to have much in the in uh, regards to ammunition besides uh, some old uh, half rotten food that they were throwing at you. And um, I think they if I remember correctly, uh, at least one of them also popped open a chest. A chest over in the corner uh, from which they were lobbing uh, jars of oil at you. Uh, the chest is still sitting there, uh, lid open. Um, regarding loot, Valoros, since you said you were nudging one of the kobolds over, inspecting them, uh, they have simple little short swords on them or actually no I'm sorry they don't even have short swords they have spears um, some of which uh, they they poked and prodded at you with others they hurled at you before switching to less conventional ammunition um, none of it looks particularly impressive however when you flip this one over on its back you notice that it has something around its neck. A little necklace uh, made of simple twine, uh, but the pendant that's hanging from it is unusual. It's a little bit of copper uh, that looks like it was crudely sort of heated up and, and melted enough to become uh, to become soft. And it looks like it has a bit of eggshell that has been pressed into it. I don't know, guys. Does this look cobalt made to you? And he shows it to the rest. Hey, here, let me have a look. Yes. People have no eye for this kind of thing. Let's see, let's see. Could I try to discern anything from that thing, or kind of or occultist? Um. Well, you could give me a crafting check. That seems crafting. to be relevant. Oh, um, can Valeros try that too? He's actually trained in that. Or I think I also trained in crafting. It. Well, but he's not very good at it. Crafting is generally what you use to identify a lot of non-magical items, uh, so seems appropriate. Uh, yeah, Valorous. Oh, it is. Sure, you've done some some crafting in your day, so to speak, but it's mostly the maintenance of your arms and armor, not not bits of jewelry. Um, so this doesn't really ring any bells to you. Um, Ezrin and Melkis, however, you inspect it and you you feel the the style of craftsmanship it's it's really not even a style at all um it's it's very sort of coarsely made very rustic 
seems like it could be of kobold make. They're not exactly known as uh, great craftsmen of anything but traps, it seems. Um, but uh, this is, you know, this this is something that might be within their their capabilities to produce. Uh, however, the 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 choice of eggshell as the the uh, sort of feature of the pendant is a little unusual, um, and you're not entirely sure what to make of that. But I can cast detect magic on it. Detect magic? It does not seem to be magical. Would would Kyra have any idea about any religious significance of eggshells? Uh, is like a talisman. Just a crude invention by these kobolds. Getting a bit of flair for art. Could it possibly be a, a, an eggshell of, of her child that we that she kept as a memento? I don't think this is important. Um, it's Kyra. Crude kobold. Um, you, you definitely, I mean, you don't know of any religion, kobold or otherwise, that worships eggs specifically or anything like that, but, um, something about the way that it's been formed and, you know, the fact that it's hanging from the neck, it does, it does, uh, it does seem to you like it could be some sort of, uh, almost re religious like iconography um uh maybe not in the sense that that you know this is a symbol of worship or a holy symbol or anything like that but in the sense that it seems to to be an item of some reverence i mean is clearly hung around the kobold's neck and hanging over over the kobold's heart um and you may notice as you're kind of going over the other remains here that all of the kobolds have one of these. Wow. Um, while we're doing this, um, I also want to check out this uh, chest with with oil. Maybe maybe I can appropriate some of that if there is no uh, ammunition. Sure. Um, the chest. You can go over to the chest. You can I, pop it open. I, I think we're paused. It. We're paused. Oh, you're paused. We are. There you go. I always forget about that. Freedom! <laughs> um, and if you make your way over to the chest, I believe I can reveal the loot actor. Yay. For the record, I, yeah. will I will check it for traps first. Okay. You, I mean, yeah, you can, you can give it a perception, look over. Um... And uh, it it is already open mm -hmm. uh, since the kobolds opened it to lob a, a bottle of oil at you. But if you well, want to I mean, be extra careful, yes, I mean they are. Uh, what is perception? I mean it's it's kind of separated from the other abilities from the other skills, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, like, it's under AC. Under yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to find it in this uh, floating tab zone. In, ah, in, no. I, I don't think it, I, I don't no, think I, I see it. Ah, no, there it is. It's attributes perception. Yes, it's the only thing under attributes for some reason. <laughs> All right. Uh, very nice. You you give a thorough inspection <coughs> to this chest. As far as you can tell, it's it's just a chest. Um. But it does have more than just oil flasks in it. Permit me to reveal the loot actor. The loot actor. You can double click on it. Double click. Unusual object. So, inside, you find a handful of things. Uh, various trinkets and collected valuables that the kobolds must have assembled here a bolt of fine silk cloth a painting of an adventurer on a horse a sack that jingles with coins a crystal decanter that is filled with uh, with dark ruby liquid looks like wine 
Um, two jars of oil. There's, I think I had, yeah, they, they did chuck one, so it should be down to two. Um, much like the one that was hurled at you. Uh, and a healing potion. Um, can recognize that pretty quickly and easily. Well, I will try to appropriate it. Do I just drag and drop it into my inventory? I believe you can. I think you can even just drag it right onto your token on the on the map. Works too. Uh -huh. There we go. Um, and there's one other thing in there that's a bit unusual. Um, it is a. It looks like a tiny little figurine or, or kind of statue, but uh, not not of a person, of like a little ladder made of of thin sticks that are lashed together. And it has a, uh, a, a kind of bangle that is dangling off of it uh, made of green feathers. Mm -hmm. Well, I will, in that case, also pull it out. And, it's, well, instead of Putting it in my pocket, I will show it to Everett. Like, good sir, do you think you have any idea what this might be? It seems unusual. Look. Uh, what can I discern? Uh, let's see here. Uh, you, Melkus, did you take that already? Yes. Under your sheet. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find the, the thing. Uh, go. Oh, no. The nature of this object is unclear. You can uh, you can make any of a number of checks to try to identify this doodad. Um, Are you doing that directly from your sheet? I think I can do it right here. I can show it to you. Um, so you can make any of those checks in an attempt to identify it. Valerius is going to try to help. Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not proficient in any of those. Valeros. <laughs> Ezrin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of you are um, apparently uh, well versed in these kinds of trinkets I don't know if you've ever seen this one in particular before but um, but you've seen similar ones it's a feather token uh, which is a, a sort of magical uh, way of, of compressing a larger object into a a smaller sort of talisman that can be easily carried and its magic can be released to uh, to to create uh, whatever it is that is that's uh, Wait, so represented. These, this jewelry that we've been finding on the cobalt, they could be some magical things compressed no. into talisman. They weren't magic. Well, they, yeah, they didn't think. <clears throat> ah, right. But what which kind of which kind of feather token is it? What does it look like? Well, this one is a ladder feather token. Well, that seems useful. Mm -hmm. So this turns into a big ladder. Yeah, when activated, this feather token transforms permanently into a twenty foot long wooden ladder. Permanently. So once we transform it, we have to haul the twenty foot long ladder around. Or so. just drop it where we drop. I we'll probably just leave it there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Out of character, this starts reminding me uh, about those uh, seals they used in in, uh, in Naruto, when they also like seal various weapons into scrolls and then summon them out of it. And this third token seems to work almost exactly like that. You just <laughs> drop it. There's and poof a ladder. Yeah. There's there's a, the yeah. They like to do that. There's also the bone, uh, robe of bones, and robe of useful things, where yeah. you just take a patch from a robe and then it turns into an, an item. Mm -hmm. At least in the first edition, there was one. Anyway, cool. Uh, well, yeah, never mind. Back, uh, that back sounds back. useful. Is what Valeris is going to say as he uh, has already turned his back on the the chest. Oh, uh, 
did, did we, we yeah did we grab the rest of that well i'm i'm about to at least with the money if you wish you can uh, take the painting but how any how how do you what? How saucy is the painting? <laughs> well, it is a man <laughs> of course. Like, like flowing. And... Um, it is an adventurer on a horse. Uh, you know, very rugged-looking type of individual, equipped with some some weapons slung over his back, uh, and some some saddlebags, and uh, looks like it must be a rather like experienced anyone. adventurer. Long gray uh -huh. hair tied up in a ponytail. Uh, if you look closely, you, swear you can see like a little little wolf pendant hanging from his. I was gonna say, isn't there, isn't aren't there these stories about Otari and his adventuring group? Or am I misremembering that? Isn't Otari the name of an adventurer? Uh, I think yeah, they they named the town after the guy. Uh, ah. And, uh, so is it, could it, do do we know anything what? about? <laughs> Well, maybe we should show it to uh, our friend. Maybe there's someone up on the surface who's a, a, yeah. a historian of some sort could help you. Well, I think, I think I, I think have some room in my pack for it. Doesn't seem to be very bulky, so oh, I, wait, that's wait, okay. wait, 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 uh, wait. What? Uh, I have plus six in my art lore skill. Oh. Oh. Um. Sorry, I rolled it before asking you. Let's see. Uh... It's a great example of post uh, impressionist. <laughs> <laughs> of uh, it's it's clearly from the Absalom school of of artists. <laughs> I have to confess that Melkus probably knows more about this painting than I do. Uh, I don't. Is is Otari named after an adventure? I don't see any reference. It, 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 it sounds. It sounds familiar. Well, that uh, again, uh, uh, out of character, that I remember from our, our abomination walls game. Yes, they. However, I think the the ghost of the adventure is in in another castle. So. I see. It might be a reference to something else. Uh, I don't know, Malchus. It, it it tickles your fancy for sure. It could be depicting some sort of uh, historic adventure. The the environs of the painting do kind of look like they could be this island. Could be Cortos. Yeah. Well, I see. So, in that in that case, I suppose Malchus will. I mean, twirl his mustache. Say, well, I mean, this isn't an interesting uh, <coughs> specimen, which. I think I might might look very well on my wall back uh, back upstairs uh, when I find a uh, find a buyer for him. Well, and he like uh, tuck it tuck it somewhere on onto his uh, backpack. Okay. Well, Valeros is gonna grab the oil. Does the oil smell kind of petroleum-y, or is it just greasy? Um, you get the sense it's more of the greasy kind of oil and not the burny kind of oil. Okay. I'll grab that. And that the just flask leaves the flask, a... right? Hmm. What was that? Uh, you mentioned the flask. The oil? Ah, that was it. I thought there was another yeah. one. Oh no, there was, there was another thing, right? Was there was there a another? crystal decanter. Yeah. yeah. Decanter. Uh, That's well, it's it's now in my possession, of course. Oh, okay. All that leaves is the bolt of silk cloth. I'll take it. All right, Ezrin, you can go ahead and take that right off the uh, the kobold loot token actor. Just double click that, pop it open, and drag that fine silk cloth onto your sheet. Yeah, the way you say it, <laughs> yeah, it's about. It almost sounds like something about to happen when he takes it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost. Okay. Um, Valerius is gonna shine the l magic light from his shield. I believe it's probably cast on his shield mm -hmm. into the into the, the the next chamber. What do we see? 
in this cave. What do you see? As well as you step forward and the light of your shield begins to shine around the place, you see a few things. Put the pause on it for a second there. Uh, let's see. So, <clears throat> shining the light around, you can see that a gaping pit opens in the floor in the center of this large natural chamber. On the far side, a ledge overlooks the entry. Atop this ledge is an ornate stone throne that looks entirely out of place in this room. A regal kobold. Wearing an oversized crown made of fish bones, sits atop the throne. Kill the intruders! She snarls at two kobold guards that come charging down the stairs, readying crossbows as they do so. I'm going to need you and everyone else. to roll initiative as soon as I started an encounter. There we go. To roll initiative. All right. Nope, I didn't do oh that. boy. Oh. So it will be saying about rushing into rooms. Ooh, that's not good for Valorous, is it? Nope. Deep. Okay. Uh, is that everyone? One, two, three, four. Yes, okay. Uh, Kira, you are the... Uh, you're not up with Valorous, but you did certainly hear the battle cry of the kobolds up ahead. What do you do? Um... Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, I think she just barely. I don't know if she can see actually the the cobalt high up on her throne. But you heard her probably. Yeah. Um, I think Kira is going to start. Oh, we're still paused. Do, can you impose us? Kira is going to start by um, moving forward. Um, and she is going to take two acts to cast Bless. I love this. I can just drag and drop it onto my token. Yep. Oh, that's so awesome. Yep. For all faults that at the ground head, you can actually do that by defaulting there. That's five feet around you, okay. All right, so you step up and you bless, and I think that's that's your whole that's thing, it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, if I step into the zone, will I get blessed as well? I do believe so. You just have to be inside the inside the area on your on when you take the action. Uh, uh. 
place. It's a five foot emanation. Uh, casting time, two. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's once it's done, it's done, right? I yeah, it, it, it's one. It's one minute. It's a one minute. Uh, it lasts right. for one minute. Right. It lasts. It lasts for one minute. But I don't think. I think that it, it's it only targets the people within five feet of you, and then, and then uh, when your turn ends, it's over. Right. No, no, no. I don't think so because you can spend then you can after spend an action to enlarge the radius. When starting the turn, you can use. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I so guess, I guess it, it's a constant radius around okay, I see. Kyra so... that that would. Uh... Like an aura effect. While within the emanation. Okay, I get it. While within the emanation. Got it. All right. So it's it's just continues to. Uh, linger there and affect any allies close enough. Very nice. Um, Ezra. That means it's you next. I move here and I will race. Uh, sorry, I will cast shield. You raise a shield of force. Counts as using the raise a shield action. Plus mm -hmm. one circumstance bonus to AC. Alright. And uh, that is it for my turn. That's it. Okay. So I, I, that's it. I have three three actions per turn, right? Yeah. Or like I three of the little triangles. But I don't yes, and I think any. you've only used two so far. You stepped up, yeah. you cast shield. <laughs> oh, actually I will uh cast reach spell. How do I cast this? There we go. That works for my next spells in my next turn, right? Uh, no, I think those only... Yeah, they... Only... Wasn't there a rule that everything has to be done on your turn? Nothing Yeah. Goes... Yeah, okay. no carry over. No, so then, yeah, that's it for my turn, because I don't want to okay. move any further. So for the I'm moment good. you're stepping up and taking the defensive, you also gain the benefits of that bless while you're there. And now the regal kobold on her throne is going to sort of stand up on the seat of the chair and begin to babble out some words in her draconic tongue. And as she does so, she points her fingers down at you and you see magical darts come flying your way it's a magic missile bad gobble would she react yeah. to the, the ring if she sees what? it what ring the one we found the one with the eggshell i oh, know sorry it wasn't a ring it was a the pendant yeah ah, but they're all wearing it right yeah yeah, yeah. Let me see. What do I have to do to actually cast this properly? I have to go to her spell sheet. She has magic missiles. I need to fire them. Cast. Sure. She sends out a barrage of these little darts, which come sailing over to hit each of the three of you. Kira, Valoros, and Ezrin. Five damage on the one for Kira. Uh, do another one. Four for Valoros. And five for Ezrin. I didn't target you guys properly, did I? That's okay. Ezrin, uh, are you going to use your shield? Because you you can explicitly says you can use it against Magic Missile. Yeah. Oh, it does, right? Yeah, then oh, I... Usually it would straight up negate that thing. 
And it has hardness five, so that's exactly enough. It's exactly yeah. enough to negate the dart. So you take no damage from it if you if you raise this or what is it? Raise not raise block. shield, but block block. Yeah. All right. Nice. With Very a wave nice. of your hand, you deflect that bolt. Showing Valeros how it's done. Yeah. Because he tries to block it, but it just kind of zings around it. Hits him. All right. The kobold scouts are up. They're coincidentally going together. And they move rapidly, taking up positions on either side of the pit here. Seemingly intent on blocking your progress towards their queen. They move, and then they hoist those crossbows up and take aim. One of them will be firing at Kyra, the other at Valoros. Let's see, I can target Kyra. That's a 15. Uh, that's a miss. All right. It, it even tells you miss by how much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as long as I target you guys properly, it uh, it it knows all of that. All right, and here comes Valoros. Also a miss, as it is easily deflected by your shield. And now uh, these two kobolds each use their remaining action in loading their crossbows with another bolt. Melkis. All right. Well, Melkis will I will step forward to get the, to get blessed, and I will raise my own crossbow. Uh, Okay, bless spell effect direct to my token. Oh, it even appears in a, in a corner of the screen. Huh. Good. And I will target this one. Click target. For which he, I will use my hand crossbow for strike one. Um, but that bolt shoots wide and the kobold sort of scampers to the side a little as it pings off of the stone wall beside it. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I guess I will just reload me, uh, for my next action. action. Okay. Valoros. All right, so I had my shield raised from the exploration mode thing, which stops at the start of my turn, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to remove that effect. And then I am going to... What? I'm, oh, right, I am badly injured. Uh, but Valeros don't care, so he's just going to take a step forward and another step as the first action. And then, as his second action, he's going to attack with his longsword. Strike. So, yes. Ooh. So I, I should have marked it first. How do Just, I mark it? Uh, I think you double right click. Well, I think I am right click impaired, so I can do option, that. Option double click. <laughs> Or it's in the in, in the top left, yeah. where, where there's the measurement tool. There's also a select targets. Yeah. Super easy. Ah, right, here we go. Well, okay. yeah, I should have marked him first. Anyway, still uh, critical. That is definitely a hit. Um, the, do you do you keep the effects of the bless? No, no, no it's no, since. No, you're right. I should have okay. turned that off because I stepped out of the. I mean, it's still natural yeah. but it is still a natural 20 yes it is a yeah. critical hit regardless go ahead and roll the damage bada boom 14 points of damage as you bring your blade down 
nearly cutting this deep into this kobold. It's grievously wounded. All right, I'll try to finish it off, even though I should probably use my shield instead, but Valeros is feeling the rush of battle Ooh. and hitting it again, this time for seven. Like it's, and... a, it's, it's plus 10 to AC to be a critical hit, right? Yep. Okay, all right. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, with two quick swings... He skewers through the kobold and it drops dead on the ground. Kyra. Uh, given that some of us are rather injured, Kyra is uh, going to channel energy. Mm. Uh... Okay, so it doesn't say... Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it. Oh, yeah, oh, it's just 1d8. Okay, yeah. Ooh! Good. So everybody gets 1d8. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. And there was two actions? Yeah. That was three. Because three. the... the yeah. yeah. For the channel, it's three. Ah, oh, okay, I see. All right. As that wash of healing energy uh, engulfs yourself and your companions, reinvigorating them, Ezrin, you're up. I will shoot at my hand, pointing at that massive kobold, the big royal kobold, and cast magic missile at it. Oh. A little magic missile in return. Uh, let's see. That's two, I think. How many actions are you using to cast magic missile? Oh, actually, I'm, yeah, I'm using all three actions. All right, so then you can fire three darts. Oof. Not bad. Total of 11 points of damage. Bolts of power just burst out. This frail old form. I will not have you shooting those things at me. I'll have you know. That's it. That's yeah. my turn. Simon, I think I'm getting some feedback through your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, good. I'm going to turn down my volume. Hopefully that'll help. All right. Well, she does not appreciate that at all. And... Where are these all? These are being weird. Something to do with the sheet. Well, she's got one move. It's a pretty big one. It's her best one. She's going to magic missile some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, and once again, she will just sort of screech and swing her hands around and hose the entire area with, uh, with bolts. Cannot cast it. The spell is already expended. Well, it shouldn't be expended. Oh, there we go. I have to hit that button first. That's weird oh i see okay interesting how that works okay here they come another round of damage here's uh valoros first 
four points for you as you get hit by a bolt. Kyra is going to take only two this time. And, uh, well, Ezrin had the nerve to hit her before, so she's going to give him another three. I can do it again, happy no. Uh, my shield is expended, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. And just a quick rule question, because I don't know how that works, but the heightened plus two, what does that mean? That, that's if you cast it uh, at the, uh, as in a higher spell, in a higher spell slot. And the plus two is how many, how much higher for it to take effect. So if you cast it as a third level spell, then you can, then you get an extra one missile with each action you spend. Yeah, on top of the ones that you're already getting from spending another action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but basically you double up, you double the whole output of the yeah. spell. But if you if you can cast a level three spell, you would be able to shoot out six missiles essentially. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty cool. If you okay. used all your actions on it, yeah. Right. Cool. And I suppose if you uh, can you cast it in even higher spell slot? Yeah, you could cast it at yeah. like fifth as well and seventh and so on. Oh cool. Will that will that continue doubling or double just once? It no, says it's a, it's just one just additional one. one additional missile for each action. So at fifth level it would be nine, at seventh level it'd be, you know. 12 so and it's not like a meta magic feat that's just something you can do that's just the spell cool just the flexibility of the spell yeah, and a lot magic. of spells a lot of spells have clauses like that if you cast them heightened for every level they do something different some spells have only uh, specific levels like it's not plus one but it's you can heighten it at fifth level and ninth level for example that's yeah, cool if you have a favorite spell that you can still make good use of it even at higher levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they kind of do that instead of, you know, cure light wounds, cure moderate wounds, cure yeah. greater, you know, whatever. They just yeah. say heal and you can just keep doing it at higher levels. So, um, which is nice. It gives you a lot of flexibility with one spell, uh, but... We have a kobold who's not very flexible because all he's got is a crossbow. Uh, so <laughs> his options are limited. Um, who Valaros, who's advancing and slaying guards left and right, or Kyra, who's keeping them well healed. Let's do one of these. I like I like this little module. Roll of fate. Ah. It appears <laughs> that he's going to target Kyra. It says, what's the point in trying to hurt them if someone can just keep healing them? So let's deal with that first. He takes aim with the already loaded crossbow and fires. A 20 to oh. hit. That is it. Oh, only five points of damage. Not too bad. Um, his second action he will use to fish out another bolt, fit it into the slot, and then crank it back. And with his final action, he will take a second shot, which I'll actually remember to target at you this time. Kapew! Ooh! Ooh. Lands a second bolt into the cleric. Ooh, this time Ooh. for maximum eight points of damage. And he stands there looking very pleased and victorious. He's clearly an expert scout and master guard. Melkis? Um, I was about to do the exact same thing that Cobble did, but I think it's about time to practice medicine. Uh, do I, I need to, to check it? I have the... I have surgery class. Uh, no, actually, I don't have the battles battles at the uh, medicine. So I can. I think I can do it in, in the combat. Sorry, never mind. Then, then uh, I will try to just do the same thing that uh, that Cobble did. I will shoot him right now once, reload, and shoot him again. Uh, 
Well, that's a hit. Damage. Will it roll? You can just click the damage there. Yep. Oh. Four points as your bolt finds its mark this time. Kobold um, recoils back. Should it be? I mean, I'm, I'm not sure my sneak attack should work on this one. Uh, yeah, when does it trigger again? They need to be flat-footed or surprised in the first round of combat? Yeah, I mean... Right, well, I think when they're surprised, they're flat-footed anyway. Well, okay, never mind. I will, I will turn it off right now. Second action to reload, and third action to shoot again. Oh, so does that mean it was only two points of damage? Yes. Okay, got it. Ooh. Miss at 16. Ooh. Yeah, these well, are like dodgy little bastards. Yeah, those are badass cobalt. Like, uh, gods of the, of the queen for a reason. Uh -huh. Alright. Bottom of the round, Valeros. So that um, ledge that the queen is uh, sitting on or, or situated on... Um, would you have to go the stairs, or could you easily climb up the wall? Let's see. Um, the ledge is... Let's call it... Uh, there's a, a fair number of steps there. Um, does it have a description there? No, not really. We're going to call that a, a... That's a pretty significant ledge that she's up on, about 15 feet up above all of you. So you could climb it, uh, but it would take some effort. And I assume it would even take longer than just walking around it. Probably, realistically, yeah. So that's one move... Well, one move to get to here. And then... Well, that would take all of my turn just to get to close to her, I think. And the crossbow guy is actually the bigger threat right now, it seems like. So, um, how far is it, though? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I can just I can make it exactly. One, two, three, four. And then attack. Um, in passing, can I see anything down in that hole? What What's down there? Uh, let's see. Uh, you can glance down and see that it appears to be a pit uh, into the depths, about 20 feet down. Okay, I strike the cobalt twice the first time I miss, but the second time I hit for 12 points of damage. Oof, oof. All right. He's still standing. Whoa, okay. But he hit my friend. He must die. That's my turn. All right. Kira? Uh, Kira? Kira does not want to die, so she is going to use some of her healing magic on herself. Uh, pum, 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 pum. With the two action version. All right. Why the why the two action if it's on yourself? Uh, so you have one. You have one action, which is a touch spell that does one d eight. Two action is uh, gives you a every. Bonus. On top. Yeah, yeah. Two action is reach, 30 feet reach, and gives extra hit points. Yeah. Uh, so I just need to apply it. Okay. And now she is going to spend one action to expand that uh, bless emanation. I hope it works. Hey. It did work. Very nice. And that's her turn. All right. Ezrin? 
question. <clears throat> the spell slot per class. So does that mean I know five cantrips and two first level spells or that the slots I have? So I can only cast two first level spells. You have five cantrips, yes. Um, and you only have those two first level spells prepared. Uh, I believe you actually know more spells than that, which are in the little spell book. You see the little book at the top yep. next to prepared arcane spells. Mm -hmm. So that's your but full that's your full spell book. But right now, only those two spells are prepared. But can I are use you... them as many times as I want? No, you can you can only use them each for each time they're prepared and they're each prepared once so for for the ah, cantrips you I, can you sh you should have cantrips that yeah, that you can yeah, uh, for first level so i already used burning cans and magic missiles so those yeah are you're important. you're out of first level slots right now that was it so in that case esrin with surprising agility for his old frame kind of shuffles behind here and swoops this arm casting Acid to fly over towards the towards Solgren. All right. Okay, he's got just enough reach to get there and still be in the area affected by the bless. So that's a what a plus one to your attack, right? Uh, yep. I hope so. All right. So don't forget to factor what? that into your attack. Okay, so how do I add that? Oh, okay, here. Um, modifier. I add plus one and. Yep. It says modifier value must not be zero, but it's not zero. Well, oh, there we go. Type in one. There we go. Yeah. It already said plus one, so I thought it was. Ooh. Well, that'll do it. There we go. Six points of acid damage. And she is going to take that. Cries out I in rage. I still have one action. I will cast shield. I think I think acid splash is two actions. But I have three, no? You moved. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. That is correct. Got greedy, sorry. That is my turn. Greedy wizard. Greedy wizard. Greedy wizard! She calls out for some reason, and uh, she's going to do more magic. Very um Oh boy. Got some spell options now that you're getting a little closer. I mean, damage is just straight up damage. It's hard to argue with that. What does this do again? Uh... Well, that's not gonna. Not gonna help tremendously. And that's just worse. Okay. Well <laughs> keep running the same playbook. Um this time, however, uh she's getting a little bit worried about Valorous uh, running up on her guards and Ezra who's just insistently blasting her with magic, so she's gonna send one Bolt at Valoros and two at Ezrin. Here comes Valoros's serving of damage. The bolt goes fizzing and zipping over to hit him for five points. And then it's going to go two of them to Ezrin. Here we go. Oh, another five and another four. Ezrin. Without the help of your magical shield, you take nine points of damage. Yeah, that is not good. Astrin takes the hit hard. 
All right. His smug attitude is quickly wiped away. That little kobold looks up at Valoros there, trying to kill him. He's got his crossbow unloaded. He tosses it to the side, draws out a short sword, which is one action. And then he's going to try and strike Valoros. Yeah! Jabs up at him a 21 to hit. Uh, um, yeah, that's a hit, but I will shield blow. I didn't raise my shield. Didn't raise your shield. Only five points of damage. Wait, 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 though. No, I can. There's something I can do. Oh, so yes. I, uh, okay. I can... Raises a reaction, I think, or something like React that. React to shield. There it is. Um, that's going to be my reaction. I can snap my shield. Here it is. Snap my shield into place. Uh, just as I would take a blow, avoiding the hit, I use my raise a shield action. So that that will give you the AC boost that you normally get from raising a shield. But if it's still if it's still not enough, to and stop I don't it. have I don't have another reaction to shield block. I see, I see, I see. Oh. So that means what was it at twenty one? I doubt that I get more than two from the shield. Yeah, the shield is just two. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess then I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm just going to take the damage. Just take the hit, okay. Five points. Uh, mm, that was a good one. Is it an... Oh God, what, what would the couple do? Try to finish him off? Uh, yeah. He's sworn to defend his queen. He's going to take that little short sword and try and jab again, now at a penalty. Oh! Critical mass! Does that provoke an attack of opportunity or something? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Mm. Ah. Alright. That seems like that's that's something that Valor should get as a feat later, but uh... But I'm I... sure there is something like that. Seems like an obvious yeah. choice. But he's swung in with a short sword and Valorous just bats the tip of it aside. Melkis. Okay. Uh, I think... I think I will try to administer a healing potion to Ezrin. One... Uh, one action to move. I, I think one action to, to to take out the the potion and one action to administer it. Uh, I feel like there's a rule somewhere about administering the potion, but Let's see. Well, at least I think so. So. Administer potion potions. Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. That works out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ezrin, please open wide and and don't worry, I'm a doctor. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I'm a doctor. Yeah, should I click the use potion or Ezrin can, can click it? Um, I mean, I think either of you can, can actually click it. But... There we go. It, it vanished from my inventory now. All right, two points back to Ezrin. I wasn't sure if you needed multiple interact actions to feed it to another, uh, but. It, that is one one is enough one does the job how so. many points two <laughs> two points it, it, it's there More than it can... yeah you got it ah yeah yeah he just he just tips his head back and Melkus pours it in <laughs> all right Valoros getting a little dire here mm-hmm 
But what are you going to do? Oh, that guy is. Ah, he is near death. Do I have any way to help myself? I do have a healing potion, but those are pretty lame, right? Just a D8. Um... Plus it eats up an action just to draw it out and an action to consume it, so... It is an action to draw it out? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Takes, a, I think, an interact action object interact to, to draw weapons, which is what the kobold did when he pulled out a short sword. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the fall. I will rely on uh, my fellow guys to do their jobs, and I will slay the kobold. That's my first action. I will target him, and then I will strike him. And I will miss him. And then I will use a second action to strike him. And I will oh, miss him no. again. Oh no! And the kobold ducks under the first swing, jumps over the second. And then I will raise a shield. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that was not the turn I had in mind, but that's the turn I got. That was a big round. Kyra. Ah, uh, uh, well. Choices, choices. Um... I guess that Kyra is going to spend her last heal on Valeros. Wow. Ooh, that's that's much needed, much appreciated. And uh, so that's two acts. Mm. Last act, I guess she will move forward. And I'll try to pull that emanation along with her. There. And that's her turn. And you don't you don't need to um, do the what is the thing to maintain the spell right there's an there's a specific action for maintaining spells but... uh, uh what's it called uh sustain a spell sustain yes yes but th this is not this uh, spell that needs sustaining you can okay. just spend the action if you want to expand right, the right. radius got it okay all right uh so valorous is in much better shape after that and uh it is Ezrin's turn. Um, how do I hide this spell again? Uh, by casting it using a higher level level slot. But since you're first level, there is no heightening to do right now. But if it's a cantrip, uh, it says heightened plus one. How much? Which one? Which one? Which one is it? Electric arc. Um. Uh, yes, you could. You could, I guess, heighten it by actually using a spell slot. But you're out of spell slots right now because you burned them both on. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't think you do that. Cantrips are automatically heightened to the to the highest spell slot that you can cast. Oh, Would, yeah. Then I'm mistaken. Yeah. Which means that it it automatically. Yeah, here it shows it shows one d four plus four. Yeah, you're right. So. The, so that's okay i didn't know that about cantrips that's the thing like they made cantrips into blasts that level with you somewhat right. that's pretty so cool it kind of, there is cantrip progression in kind of like uh automatically heightened to half of your level rounded up yes which comes out to you know the highest level uh, slot oh that's yeah that's funny i guess that does work out that way this means it's equal to the highest level of the spells. So it's still... 1d4 it, it, plus 4. Yeah, it, it, it is as described there because you can't cast second level spells yet, so... So as my lifeblood is oozing out of me, cackles of electricity burst out. And it is, uh, yeah, automatic 1d4 plus 4. Sixth damage. Uh, I should have targeted her, huh? Oh, 
I know it's a DC 17 basic reflex. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, I'm pretty sure it's not just automatic <laughs> damage. There's a reflex save. Um, I got to it again. So here we go. And it arcs to... What is the range on it? 30 feet? 30 feet. Oh, that should that should have the other kobold in range. Oh, and it's two creatures, right? Yeah, it's up to two creatures, so... Oh, both of them. Alright, let's do the big one first. The queen on her throne. Gonna make a dexterity saving throw. Reflex. Reflex saving throw. I remember what system I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Reflex saving throw. And just Ooh. fails. Ah. The little one. Nails it. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so that is six points of electricity damage. She's fried, but she continues to stand there. The little feathers that make the crown on top of her head smoking slightly. I think uh, the other guy takes half damage. Uh, I think think it is no, no. Uh, i don't think so it's not a basic save ah so a pass is just a pass yeah it, it's oh, wait 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 save oh no it does i'm sorry it does say basic reflex save so he passed but not by 10 or more so he does indeed take three points um which kills him okay yeah. so even though he dodges it it still catches him a little bit, and it's just enough uh, to jolt Can't him. Dodge electricity. Uh, and with a screech, he topples over into the pit. And I will cast shield. With one weak arm, just kind of lifting it and boom, this force energy manifesting in front of me. And that's my turn. All right. Nicely done. Probably a good call because she's up and she's injured but furious. Her guards laid low before her, herself, her own royal person wounded. Hmm. Get. I got my shield. I know what I've done. She is going to... Hmm. She's going to look down at Valoros there. She's going to point her fingers at him again, wiggle them back and forth. And she's going to say, Be gone, be gone, or face the wrath of the Dragon King! And I need you to make a will save. My favorite one. Valeros only? Valeros only. There you go. It has only one target. Um, ooh, is that a... What's the DC? That is a critical failure! What? You don't have anything oh. against fear effects, do you? Uh, he may be brave or something. Is that still a thing? I don't know. I think fighters might... I don't remember. Panic, panic. Uh, there's nothing in here. Will modifiers trained. There's nothing about conditional modifiers in here. I don't know. Maybe that's a higher level thing. Um, what if I use my my hero point for this session? Can I? Oh, uh, yeah, that gives you a reroll, I believe. Right? Am I remembering that right? Carnus, you run this a lot, don't you? 
Hero points. It's oh, a reroll. I, I didn't roll it. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't it's a it, I played it. Yes, uh, hero hero points should gi uh, give you a, re a reroll. Okay. And then we have exactly um, one of them. Yeah. I will reroll it with the one hero point I have. Ooh. So at least not a crit fail. It's a failure, uh, but at least it's not a critical failure, which means you don't have to run away from her. However, you are frightened too. Go ahead and add that condition to yourself. Uh, she really needed that crit fail to get you away from her. Um, um, do, wait, Summer, do you get any uh, bonuses from Bless uh, into your saving throws? No. That's just attack rolls, I think. Uh, yep. Um, and the last thing that she's going to do after frightening Valoros is finally hop down off of her throne and begin backing away. Creating yet more distance between you and her. Kind of hunkers off in a corner, still screeching and screaming in rage about how you shall face the wrath of the kin of dragons. Melkis. All right. I will reload my crossbow as one action. Then I will move a little. Hopefully enough to actually see the <laughs> the queen after which i will try to take my shot okay i'm gonna say that with that ridge there and with this column she is gonna have uh some cover uh, what do they call it half half cover plus okay. two ac uh, but you can take I the shot it... i think plus two here is is considered the uh, normal cover right and this here is just this one Right, they have lesser and greater cover. That's right. So it's it's normal cover plus two to her AC. A modifier. Uh, I will add it into my roll then. Okay. Cover minus two then. It will be. Uh, okay, let's try this. Oof! Even Ooh. with cover, that is a hit. Well done. Let's see the damage. One <laughs> point. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. Oh, Melkis, you land a shot, but it's only a glancing blow grazing her and seeming to enrage her further. Valoros. Does this um, sort of stair, do the stairs cost additional movement? No, they don't impede you. You can just go right up them. Okay. Then it is one move action, one, two, three, four, and another one, one, two, three, four, to make it exactly here. And then use my remaining action. Oh, wait, first of all. I no longer have my shield raised. And then I will finish her. 23 is, oh, I should have marked her. Is a hit, even though Valoros is quaking at the thought of facing the dragon king. <laughs> this is uh, confrontation therapy for me. Yeah. <laughs> Five points uh, of damage. You can see in the damage that he's still taking. Uh, but at the end of my turn, Frightened is removed by one step. So now I'm at Frightened 1. Well, perhaps it helps significantly that running your sword through this kobold has stopped that awful shrieking. And in fact, as you draw it out, her whole body lolls over, collapsing, mm. dead. Guys, a little help here. Ah, of course. I wasn't scared. That wasn't scary. Uh, she didn't. Uh, I mean, definitely did not get under my skin here. All right, all right, Mister Azran. Let me take care of you. Just uh, bite on this piece of belt and, and uh, try not to scream. Try not to. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, I will not use uh, risky surgery on, on you because uh, last time I almost killed Valeros with it. <laughs> uh, I think Kira would like to assist with the with the with the medicine check. Mm -hmm. So Kira has to make the check. If she succeeds, she adds. One, she 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 has to hit like what DC fifteen, right? If I remember correctly. Uh, I think like according to the rules, it's twenty, which 20. seems just to quite help. high. May yeah. Maybe we can uh, do it the other way around. Then I think your medicine is higher than mine, or not? Uh, probably. She is a healer after all. Oh, yeah. It, it is. It does seem like a high DC, but I think the intention is to make it so that someone who's very skillful at something can easily help. There is has a good chance of helping someone who's less skillful, but. Yeah. A less skillful person is probably not going to help someone who's already better at it than them. Hmm. I think that's the, the thought behind such a high DC. Yeah, but... because uh, my medicine is plus four, so... Yeah, Kira is, Kira is uh, more proficient than that. Well, she's not more proficient, but she's better than that. Okay. So, okay, l then let's uh, have you by, uh, bound his uh, evidence wounds and... Okay, uh, so Kira will attempt to do so. Yeah, that... it, would be, it would be better if you did that. <laughs> yes, Kira succeeds. And I believe that's what, 2d8 back? I think so, yeah. So you can roll, Ezran, you can roll uh, 2d8 hit points regained. Ezran can? Yes. Just as right. Okay. Just as right. Uh, we'll get to the other rules. I, I just Nine hit points. That is brilliant. Esrin is revitalized almost to full health. You only see a, a slight shadow under his eyes. The mm -hmm. weight of age and adventuring weight heavily upon him. Mm. Well, Valero's being uh, barely injured is already busy going through the, the the throne room and poking through the queen's belongings. Okay. Going through. Well. It seems that this ledge uh, where the throne sits is also a personal resting area for the uh, so-called kobold queen. You see a straw pallet here, uh, not unlike those you found in the previous chamber. Um, there is uh, something of note here. Uh, which is a rusty iron chest just beside the pallet. And sitting atop this chest is a large broken eggshell mm -hmm. that's almost two feet tall. Ivory in color. The shell has green veins running through it. And it's clear that the pieces of eggshell worn by the the boss and many of the kobolds came from this egg. Wait, and it's it's sitting on top of the sh of the the chest. Sitting on top of the chest, yeah. But it's broken. It is broken. Mm -hmm. Does it look like somebody smashed that egg on the chest, or what's the idea? Hmm. Well, I suppose well, they put it there to be to in order to snap off the pieces more easily, or something like this. Kyra, you're looking at the chest. I mean, it's old and rusty, but you, you don't you don't see, like, it doesn't look like somebody, like, broke the, the egg on top of it or something like that. You just see the bits of shell. There's no, like, yolk or, or anything like that. Well, Valeros is just kind of, like, brush it off to the uh, off the, the, the lid onto the side <laughs> as if it was just some, some sort of dirt or debris. And then he's going to open the chest. 
the larger pieces of egg crack further as they land on the stone floor. Um, you go to heave open the lid of the chest, but discover that it doesn't want to budge. It seems to be locked. Hmm. All right, everyone, step back, he says. And if nobody we... objects, he's going to try to smash open the lock. <laughs> Yeah, when, when, once you take a, start to build for a swing, Milkis will, will uh, step in like, wait, 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 well, I think we can do this more civilized way. And he'll politely try to shove uh, <coughs> Valerus aside. Alright, yeah, no You can shove to... people politely. Yeah, no, no <laughs> need to cause any more rackets here. Uh, and I will try to open it with uh, with tools, like uh, the locksmithing tools. That's right. Let's see a thievery check. <clears throat> locksmithing check, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> it? uh, roll. There we go. Ooh, nice. Oh, 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 that's a roll. <laughs> The DC of this lock was 25. <laughs> uh, Melchus, you fiddle with it a bit. You gotta, you have to use like a little stiff bristled, bristled brush to to get some of the rust out of it first, so that it'll it'll even the tumbler will even turn for you. But eventually, you manage to get your tools in and fiddle them around for a few minutes until you hear a click click sound. Mm -hmm. Right, this was a bit harder because it was filled with rust, but on one hand, while well, the springs were very tough and I was afraid I will break my, some of my tools, but on the, on the plus side, the levers were stuck together, which means I can just do this and like, yeah, there <laughs> we go, and it will open just like this. Now, let's do this again, so I show it's not a fluke. <coughs> no, never mind. And it will open it. And you open it. Hey. <coughs> Inside the chest, you yes. find some very interesting things. There is a silver bracelet with a fish pattern, a very old map of some sort of strange looking dungeon, a sword a long sword that oddly enough is smoldering with with looks like wisps of smoke sort of curling around the blade and, and gently uh, diffusing off of it and that's not all oh it also has a dwarven face carved into the hilt that's fun well that, no, that's uh, good i mean Dwarves are always carved faces into things. Uh, it's very polite in this society. <laughs> there is also a wand, a pair of healing potions, and a floppy straw hat. Mm -hmm. I see. The straw hat must be important. Well, finally, some treasure. Uh, Valero says as he reaches in, grabs the sword, and like weighs it carefully, sees how it's balanced. Well, um, um, like marvels at the little wisps of smoke um, that play around the blade. And he'll he'll probably just use it without knowing what it is. But of course, it would be nice if somebody could tell him. <laughs> Somebody with a magical inclination, maybe. <laughs> well, I, I suppose he, he left for a moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's probably Oh, he did? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Kira will take a look at the wand. Uh, Karnas, did you mean to uh, grab that one bracelet immediately? Is that... Uh, it, well, of course, I'm a rogue. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can take a look at that wand. Why don't you give me one of the following? 
<clears throat> oh, it should have been a uh, secret. Uh, oh, yeah. Technically, for, for identifying items, it's supposed to be a secret roll. And you could, you could just you could just click the the name of the on, check. On the, yeah, you okay. can just click the name. Um, uh, however, uh, it's no secret, uh, Kira, to you what the nature of this wand is. You've been slinging healing spells around all uh, all day long, and uh, well. This looks to be a wand of heal. Ooh. And I don't remember how wands work here. <laughs> Neither they, do I. Yeah, they give oh, you one right extra there. slot, uh, spell slot, basically. You can use it once per day plus overcharge. Okay, what's that? <laughs> the, I think that's the thing where you can try with a flat check, and if you succeed, then you use it, and if you fail, then it's out for the day. Not all that. Like that, I think, yeah. But I, I, I'm curious about, uh, since there's no use magic device anymore, is it anybody can use it, or only spellcasters? How does it work? Uh, it, uh, you need to, cast a, to be able to cast the spell to use the wand, so it is it's effectively the wands and are just giving you an extra sl spell slot to cast this particular spell. Oh, okay. So this is now like a hard thing that if you can't cast spells, you just can't use magic items? Um, at, at this point I don't remember, but I think it something like this yes mm, I, I think magic magic items in general i think you can still use them because sometimes they just take an action to activate or something but mm -hmm. wands in particular it seems that yeah you specifically use the cast a spell action to activate it uh, which okay. to me implies that you need to be a spellcaster yeah oh it, it does say it must be on your spell list so you ha you have to have the spell yeah. list okay oh you have to have it on your spell list even okay well, in that case, uh, Kira is going to grab that. All right. Um, go ahead and take that out of the treasure chest. Uh, what were those, Valorous? I saw you made a check and, and Melkis made one too. Was was that also for the wand or was that something else? Uh, yes. Yeah, that was for that. Okay. Well, it's a good thing Kira is here because, Valorous, you're pretty sure that was like a, a wand of fire exploding or something. But... <laughs> But... And it's activated by uh, breaking it in two parts. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> That's how you get the magic out. Exactly. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, there's still a few other items in there. Yeah, uh, Alejandro, you weren't here for that. So Valeros has has grabbed the long sword and is um, like eyeing it uh, 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 admiringly, but he has no clue about its powers. He just likes the way that the flames or smoke play around the blade. Let me take a look at that. Ezrin, you can uh, take a look at the sword with any of those checks. You don't need any, any, any like, detect magic or something, because then Valeros can actually try his occultism, too. Um... I don't think detect magic is technically required. I think uh, okay. they have DCs built into them to identify them, so... Okay. Yeah, then uh, he actually has a chance of identifying stuff. He's trained in occultism. All right. Um, are those... Those are whispered to me, right? Those checks? Yeah, I don't yeah, see those. They should be. Okay. Um, uh, you are... Uh, Valeros, you're you're perhaps looking the sword over, um, and uh, and trying to come to some sort of conclusions about it. Your your mind going wild with the possibilities. Uh, Ezrin is able to to rein you in a little bit as you start to go off on the more outlandish. Uh, uh, theories about what the sword could do, uh, but he Maybe himself is not fully capable of comprehending it either. Mm. Malchus, uh, you take a look at that. 
that sword as well. I mean, it's smoking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's face. just and it has a dwarven face. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Something to do with dwarves and smoking. It must be. Some, it must be ritual in purpose. Must be. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it is pretty. I kind of like the smell of that smoke. No, I'll, I'll just take it. Can I take a look at the unusual headwear. Sure. Uh, let me let me post the thing for that too. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, that floppy hat. Uh, it's just it's just too gosh darn unassuming to be nothing. It's uh, it's so mundane compared to everything else in here that it just has to be something special. And and Velaros, Ezrin, and Melkis in unison all say, "Hat of disguise!" Yay! <laughs> it's a hat of disguise. Yes. Well, I mean, if it, if the hat is unassuming and, and I am an uh, unassuming, it's only only natural that if I'm I'll grab it. <laughs> Oh, sure. off it goes. All right, that just leaves the old map and a couple of healing potions in there. Yeah. What does the old map look like? Does it have like a big X marks the spot kind of thing, or is it just a uh, an overview map of some bigger geographical area? It seems to be uh, marking out some sort of strange-looking dungeon, um, hmm. but it does not doesn't have a, a magical X marks the the spot or anything like that. It is, however, clearly very, very old. Worn and a little uh, little singed at the edges as if someone had been careless with the candle. There's some old tea stains on it for some reason. But do I recognize any of the rooms that we've been through? Does it seem like it's a map of this place? It does not seem like a map of this place, no. From from what you can tell. All right, then Valeros hands it to Ezrin and says, "Bah, it kind of looks like your thing. If you if, once you once you found out where that is, let me know, and we can go treasure diving together." Do you want to take it, Alejandro? Sorry. I forgot I wasn't good with crisps and they want to bother you. Yes, I would definitely take And um, who wants the healing potions? Um, Valero still has one. Yeah. Uh, take Ezra. Let to take you. Uh, let take I think... one. And it will be better for him. Or Kira. I can take one, but Kira should get one as well. Uh, well, Kira has the has a well. You you didn't see that we found the healing wound, which Kira has now. Ah, but then I'll take two, because I am the squishy. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Do, do we think we're done here? He says as he rolls over the queen to check one last time if she has anything of interest. Uh, you roll over the queen. You see that she uh, she has a staff which she never got to bring to bear on you. Um, she too has one of those eggshell necklaces, and it, you realize that dangling there next to the necklace is an iron key. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'll take well, that. Valero says, and he he hands the staff to Ezrin. I guess this is for you. And uh, well, checks her pockets if she has any. I guess that's it. And then he keeps moving. That key was probably for the chest, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, Milk it didn't is look like it was the lock. Um, Milk is actually will try to once again to loot some ammunition from cobbles because this one apparently do use crossbows. Yeah, these did have crossbows. Um, what kind of? Does it even say what kind of crossbow? It just says crossbow. 
Um, yeah, uh, they each have a, a brace of crossbow bolts on them, uh, twenty per. So you mm -hmm. can you can load up on bolts. Um, yeah. It'll just take a, bu a bunch. Well, uh. Can we, just before moving forward, can we uh, check the staff? Ezran, what, what do you think that does? I haven't seen the staff. Where is it? Valeros Val just handed it to you. It, it, the, the Cobalt Queen had it. Uh-huh. Mm, this is my inventory. Oh, cool. If I double click her, I actually see it. Um... You can double click the queen and then grab it. Oh. Ah, okay. There we go. And there's the eggshell necklace. Yeah. Now you guys are just stealing all the stuff off of off of <laughs> my NPC that I need to somebody else to interact what with as well. Oh, <laughs> shoot. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna need right. those back for the next adventuring party that comes through here. <laughs> just return all of the items at the end of the cave. Thank you. <laughs> Is this an attraction park? <laughs> you can you can buy a picture of you looting the corpse. <laughs> um You've got you've got the staff, uh, uh, Ezrin. Um, you wanna? You wanna How can I do everything with it? It just says staff. It just says staff, indeed. I well, you can. It's an ordinary staff. You can um, make one of those roles: Arcana, Religion, Occultism, or uh, what's the other one? Religion. Uh, or nature um, you could also of course detect magic would of course tell you if it's magical I think an arcana check will tell me if it's magical as well it's not it's just oh. a wooden staff ah. oh okay oh that was disappointing yeah that was a bit anticlimactic I also misread the the chat message. I saw, thought, "Oh, the staff of Zolgran," but it's, <laughs> it's the staff of Zolgran. Zolgran was her name. You may have, you may, if if there hadn't been two months between this session and our last one, you may have recalled the kobolds muttering something about Zolgran being their master down below. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Valorous when you you walk around the corner here you can see that there's a narrow little gap um which if you peer in shining your shield around you see it opens into a much larger chamber with a high ceiling and a strange sort of uh uh fog hanging in it uh slightly greenish looking clouds drift uh around massive mushrooms that uh, choke the cavern with their uh, their their mushroom caps and uh, and their spores uh, okay so Valeros walks in takes a look at this and uh, over his shoulder he says to the rest of the group all right. Um, I've I've seen I've seen mushrooms like that before. Just uh, try, stay hydrated and think positive things, and mm -hmm. we'll we'll be fine. <laughs> Good. Um, moves into the cavern, staying close to the the edge, assuming that it gets more spory the the more you move into the center. I wait and see what happens to him. At this point in the adventure, uh. The <laughs> the text of the adventure encourages me to remind you that you may have been adventuring for some time. Some of your companions may be getting rather worn out and running out of resources. And it's never <laughs> a bad idea. Take a rest. Oh. Yeah, I think we should take a short little nap. <laughs> mm -hmm. Otherwise, Ezra gets a bit cranky. All right, Valeros rolls his eyes. I guess uh, it's already almost five, huh? 
I haven't had my tea yet. All right, he'll stick with the group. This can't go on forever. Is there a short... If... I forgot, is there a short rest mechanic that would help us, or do we have to do, like, the whole... No, um, there's no such thing as short resting. There's just those ten-minute intervals of, of doing things like refocusing or, um, or treating wounds or the like. Uh, but if you want to get a proper rest in and restore those spell slots and the like, then you gotta tuck in for the night. Can we please? My bedroll and everything. Or we could, you know, go back up and have a night's rest in a proper tavern. Oh yeah, how long would it take to get back up there? Uh, very long, this... maybe only about a half hour or so of trekking back to, to get. Oh, yeah, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then sleep down here? Yeah, definitely much more comfortable in the fishery. Uh, in that case, um, you guys can return to the surface. <clears throat> And uh, when you get back up there, um, Tamily is uh, is lounging about uh, in the the fishery. Um, you can see that she's doing her best to look calm and collected, uh, but she's clearly a bit. Um, she's clearly been stressing, and when she sees you come up. She goes, oh, oh, good, you're back. Oh, you, you were down there for so long, I was starting to get worried. Uh, I was beginning to think I was going to have to call the, the guards to go uh, looking in after you, and I, I, was, I was sure to get uh, uh, reaming out for, uh, for, uh, for sending uh, people into danger and then for forcing the guards to allocate additional resources from the garrison. And like, but anyway, we don't, we don't have to worry about any of that because you're back, so it's, uh, it's good. Uh, my, you look awful. You may have a bit of a cobalt infestation down there, dear. Oh dear, cobalts. Oh yeah, cobalt. yeah. plenty of. Them. Yeah, it's the second worst infestation I've seen. Second worst? Oh well, that's good. I suppose at least it's not the worst. What was the worst? Oh, I'll tell you later sometime. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh, uh, but. Don't worry, we slayed their queen. The uh, story's over. I'm sure there's nothing else uh, that's yeah, ever it, coming from them. It's. Uh, uh, I think the only thing that's left is a bit of a clean up there. I will will oh. bring in some oil and torches and. <clears throat> it... Well, uh, well, well, very good. Um, I'm I'm glad to hear that you you got to the mystery of that. So the kobolds were the ones stealing all the fish, huh? It I looks believe. like it. Yeah, no, it, it seems guess, to be so. I guess so yeah, yeah. At, least, hmm. at least we didn't find anyone else yet. Wait, uh, uh, what, what, since we're the, here, uh, does any of this mean anything to you? And he, uh, Valerius, lays out some of the stuff that we found, um, like the, the picture of the adventurer, mm -hmm. the the eggshell necklace, the unidentified longsword. Well, I, I've never seen a picture like that before. Uh, it's quite nice. Um, and, I, well, I don't know. That looks like some sort of map. Uh, um, maybe some sort of tunnels or something. Uh, but I'm sorry. I'm no historian or anything like that. I just yeah. run the fishery, you know, keep people know. happy. Oh, wait. And, uh, and, yeah. and keep them well supplied with uh, with nets and and bait and and you know mend the, mend the nets and and salt the fish and all that doesn't really involve much maps or yeah I think there's a there's a tiefling Best woman story. I think yeah I mean there's a tiefling woman she lives uh, up to the north uh, called Rina I mean she uh, runs uh, the curiosity shop we might just take these things to her. Oh, oh yes, Rin. Rin would be an excellent uh, uh, person to consult with, um, or, or uh, maybe, well, uh, maybe not so much the painting. Uh, but there is uh, uh, odd stories. Uh, it's run by Morla 
spent and uh and and he rather uh, uh enjoys books and, and old tomes and, and and scrolls and the like uh, maybe he would have something to say about the map of course there's also the library too uh the dawnflower library they they collect all sorts of old old uh, old things oh um, i don't remember where, where it is I think oh, the, the, the library. It's down here. Well, I don't know how you guys feel, but after coming out of a smelly dungeon like that, I don't really feel like spending the night at the library. Uh, anyway. It's right. literally snoring as they stand. Well, I, I'd be happy to make arrangements for you. I can I can stretch out a couple of uh, of hammocks right here in the fishery if uh, if you if you wish to spend the night or, or you could you know make your way to any of the, the taverns in town there's um there's uh there's crook's nook uh which is right uh spanning the river there uh although uh, frankly it's not the sort of place i would ever want to get caught um uh be seen you know what i mean or or the rowdy rockfish uh that's a bit more uh, uh let's say quaint and quiet Hammock will do just fine. Oh, very good. Um, uh, let me make some arrangements for you then. Oh, I I would be happy to prepare some dinner too. I have fish. Salted fish? Sure, sure, whatever. But remember that fish needs to swim, so... <laughs> she stares at Valorous for a moment. Oh! oh. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Maybe I'll make a, a stop by uh, uh, the crow's cask, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know. Uh, well, I mean, milk is uh, at, at this mention will uh, produce the crystal decanter uh, thing. Well, I mean, we might as well sample our, our, our some of our, our other spoils in this case. Ooh. Uh, yeah, Malchus, you can pull out the decanter. You see the, the ruby liquid sloshing around in there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you pop the lid off of it, though, uh, you're assaulted by the acrid scent of vinegar. Ah, well. <clears throat> well, I guess we can donate it for the marination. Uh, in... uh, fish and chips? Uh, fish? <laughs> Am I smelling fish and chips? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Ezrin, sir, uh, coming right up. And uh, Ezrin is like, really showing his age after the exhaustion and between like dozing off and smelling the vinegar and the fish, like, <laughs> uh, like a meal before nap time. And uh, Tamily can busy herself with uh, making some arrangements for you, both a uh, place to sleep and a place to eat, and uh, some libations to wash it down. Um, she does all of this happily and eagerly. She seems to be much more relaxed and relieved now that she knows the threat has been dealt with, and there's just a little bit of cleanup to do. Mm -hmm. um, sure. In fact, uh, she also uh, furnishes you with your payment, since you're saying the job is is all but taken care of, um, and each of you receives a pouch with 10 gold pieces in it from her. Yeah. And uh, as you are resting, relaxing, and recovering all of your abilities and spells and hit points and the like, you can also gain a level. Ooh. Ooh how do we level up here? Good luck. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. How do we level um... I think there's at the top you have uh, top right you have two. you have uh, a little level you can just change it and it automatically calculates everything. Oh really? So it just change it to two. Let's see spells. But it doesn't really tell you what you need to do on the level up, right? It, it yeah, it doesn't show you the choices you can make, but it'll do all the calculations for uh, hit points and things like that. Oh, okay. Because at level two, I should have three prepared spells. Here it says, 
that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so at, I get a at level two, I get a fighter feed and a skill feed. Should it, would it tell me that I have needs <clears throat> left to? No, I guess it doesn't tell me. No, it does. Empty slot. There it is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Class feed fighter. Okay, yeah, cool. That now works. Okay, I, I, I remember what I wanted to fix, so... Uh, these. How are you guys doing? You figuring this out? Uh, I think we are. All right, so, okay, this time I am taking battle medicine, so I will be able to patch people up in, in while in combat. And for my class... How, how do you I... manage? Huh? Uh, wait, no, no, wait, no, no, wait. Okay. And for my, for my class feat, I, was, I wanted to take the assassin dedication. I feel like you're going in two opposite directions at the same time. Hmm? Getting better at healing people and at killing them. Hmm. What can I say? So, Melchis is a man of many talents. I'm sure Valorous's level up is quite simple. Uh, actually, I'm getting a fighter feed. Oh, uh, my skill increase at second level. I get a skill increase. There are a couple of choices that seem cool, but I mean, the classic power attack just seems like the right thing to do. Yeah, I think I'll go with the power attack. Because why not? And then a skill feed, too. Oh. Where do I where do you add your your class feeds? Because I should have one wizard feet if you go and one to skill. The, if you go to the, the feats tab, which is the one that has this sort of metal looking symbol. I, I'm there and I can add one skill feat, but I don't see wizard feet to add. Well then maybe you're not getting one. It should there should be a category called class feeds. Okay, because mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, the archives of Nethys, and it says skill feat, wizard feat. Yeah, that's the class feat. Yeah, but there's no adding the... anything. If you look oh, yeah, at yeah, it, yeah. you see where it says yeah, empty yeah. slot, and then there's a little plus button. There we go, yeah. Skill <clears throat> feat is tricky. No idea what... What might work here? Uh, Anthony, are you familiar with, with how uh, how to prepare spells here? Um, let's see. Uh, like I I have a particular problem. It I think it's only showing me two first level spells. It is showing be you, yeah. You're at level two? Yeah. 
I click the rest button in case that would uh, refresh things. Hmm. It says you have three divine... It seems to recognize that you have three first level spells in divine font. Uh, yes, but, but that was three before two. Really? It's one plus charisma. Oh, huh. Um, and you do get, I assume you get a new spell slot from leveling as a... Yeah, I, I checked, uh, I checked uh, the table on, on Nethys. It, it should be three first level spot slots. Well, you can, just, you can manually adjust it, which is what I just did, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, 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 that's what I was looking for. Uh, how? Oh, 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 it's... Okay, it's a yeah, little, numbers, it's a little yeah. field. Okay, I, I thought it was like auto calculated or something. Okay, well that that's easier then. Okay. Yeah, I thought it would have been as well, but but yeah, you can just manually <laughs> tweak that. Okay. Uh, while I'm we are resting, Melkis will have to treat my his own wounds because at level up, my level up doesn't seem to re refill my hit points. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it does it does refill it's just very slow you only get a uh, con modifier mm -hmm. times level which is not a lot yeah um you get your level level times con modifier or level plus mm -hmm. con modifier i think it's times that Okay, and for my skill increase, I maybe somewhat counterintuitively will pick medicine, which <coughs> which put it in into plus seven, like my other skills, basically. Uh, let's see, where is that section on resting? No, Game no, no, like... resting uh, did increase my hit points. Well, uh, healed two hit points, but uh, level leveling up. It's not maybe, enough. Yeah, 26. Yeah, live, live, yeah. Oh, I, uh, oh you I mean actually stopping. increasing your maximum? Yeah, Is so I'm just saying? stopping it off with some uh, bandages. Yeah. I hope it is really tricky. No idea what I should take. I guess uh, I'll take intimidating glare. Oh wait, that was intimidating prowess. What's that? Physically menace the target, plus one bonus to your intimidation check, and ignore penalty for not sharing language. That sounds good. Let's take it. Feed, skill, feed, and all the numbers you said are, are they're done automatically, so I don't need to worry about that. They should be, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I'm ready. Normally, resting restores a number of hit points equal to your constitution... Where, where the hell is this? I'm having such a hard time finding it. Resting.
Before going to bed, Esren will approach Valeros, just absentmindedly, fumble with his hair, and pluck out a hair. I'll give this back to you in the morning. Well, uh, what? Ugh. Weirdo. Okay, it uh. sounds like I will have not much time left. So if everyone's ready, we should probably okay to the dungeon. Go. Just a quick question: Melkis picked a, a medicine um, skill feat. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, which one? Uh, what? Which skill feat did Melkis pick? I pick metal medicine. Okay. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. You've returned to the dark depths of the dungeon. If anyone needs to cast light, yep. you might want to redo that. Ah, right. Okay. Very, uh, very quickly. Before. Before we left in the morning, mm -hmm. Esran started fidgeting with like some things. The little pouch put Valera's hair and some herbs and some roots and rocks tied in a tight little pouch. And the morning was like, young lad, you seem to get yourself into a whole mess of trouble. Wear this. It'll perhaps make things a bit lighter for you. Uh, what is it? It is a small pouch, a talisman, a small talisman. And um, the first time that day that you attempt a saving throw against a spell or a hunt, you get a plus one circumstance bonus on the roll. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, I guess. Does it have a name? Get killed. I mean, it has a name. It's a pouch with stuff in it. Part of your hair is it. You want to name it something? <laughs> As, as, as Simon, I'm asking you if it has a name because maybe I can. Uh, it, it's a feat called Root Magic. Um, it doesn't really have a name. Okay. I just have to remember it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Valero says thank you, and then he turns around and he does like an eye roll to Kyra and Melkis as he pockets the. Talisman. All right, I'm back in the dungeon. He's going to take the lead once again. We'll lead once the group again. Into the. Um, into the room with the mushrooms. Okay. As a reminder, towering yellow mushrooms cover the floor of this vast cave, some reaching over 10 feet in height. They seem to emit a pale light, giving the entire chamber an eerie glow. Shattered remnants of barrels, torn open with their contents nowhere to be seen, lay scattered around the base of the mushrooms. Somewhere off on the far side of the chamber, something stirs, and a faint snarl comes from the shadows. Alright, brother. Valerius uses this exploration mode, or he like keeps his shield ready. Got it. And uh, takes the lead, moving across the cavern. And he whispers over his shoulder, "I said, do you see what I see over there?" He says, and he uses his sword to point at what looks like a pile of coins on the far end of the chamber, reflecting the yellow light of the mushrooms. This here? Mm -hmm. That does look like a pile of coins. And then Valeros is gonna lead into that direction. And Valeros, as you head that way, a bright green dragon leaps into view. And although the beast isn't much larger than you, 
Large leathery wings and snapping jaws make the hatchling look like an ancient worm. The creature gazes at you with cunning eyes and snorts a cloud of yellow vapor. With a fierce roar, the dragon charges forward to attack. I'm going to need everyone to give me perception rolls for initiative. Perception for initiative. That's how we do it. Okay. Uh, do you need to activate combat or something before? I do. There you go. Okay. Right. That's what I was. Yeah. To use your uh, your first initiative roll there, Ezrin, and get one from Valorous. Oh, uh, there we go. We'll just add it. You to initiative that way. And now the dragon. Is it a baby dragon? That's an actual dragon. It's an actual dragon. And it does. What have... did you what did you think came out of that egg? I don't know. But it's just a baby. I didn't think we'd run into a dragon at level two. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, it's just the hatchling. Look how cutie woody. Okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> let's get things going. Valoros, you are the first to act. The dragon is currently perched up on a little ledge that is about uh, 10 feet off the ground up there. Okay, great. So it's uh, too high up for me to do anything. Um, anything meaningful, and I'm sure it has some sort of breath weapon. I, I guess it's fair to assume that Valeros would assume that, right? That a dragon has a breath weapon. Fair enough. Okay, so what he'll do is he will ready his shield. Um, uh, how do I do that? It was an action for me to do that. Oh, now I can do that twice. That's weird. I will raise a shield. Raise a shield. Shield raised. That's an action. And then the second action is to try and take cover as an action between, uh, like, I, I assume sure. that there are mushroom trunks or whatever. Yeah, there's big uh, mushrooms around you. You can take cover. Yeah, so I'll get, I, I assume I'll get a little bit of cover from that. And then, is there something like a ready action? There is a ready action, but it, it it eats up two of your actions to ready something oh, typically I, I think right do i have that right that that's i think right. so yeah I, think I remember that being the case um in that case i don't take cover but i use my two actions to ready an action that should the dragon like do a flyby or something come into range i will try to strike it okay well Using the open space. All right. And that's um, my turn. Should it come into range? You're going to try and strike it. Here we go. Because the dragon is up. And the first thing it's going to do is spread its wings and <laughs> it flaps up into the air, letting out a, uh, a draconic cry. High pitch for its small size, but. Nevertheless, sends a chill down your spine. And it comes swooping down and around. It has some insane movement, if I remember correctly. Uh, where's that speed? Yeah. Pretty good movement. It comes swooping in over the mushrooms and is going to stop here flapping in the air as it looks down at Valorous who dared to approach it and you can see it opening its jaws here we go where's that breath weapon it blasts down at you from the sky 
and you see a cloud of yellow vapors come shooting out at you. Uh, did it not? There we go. I need you to give me a... Oh, I can, I can do all this. I don't really need to do it, because he's only targeting you with it. You're the only one in the potential area here. Um, but I need you to give me a reflex saving throw. Five Ds. Oof. Oh, God. That's bad. That's 23 points of poison damage. That's more poison than I have. No, I mean, it's a, it's a it's a critical fail, so it doesn't. Even oh my take... god, it is! It's yeah. double that. It's forty six no. points of damage. Yep. So Valero's unconscious. Boom. I, I um, and I think if I remember correctly, oh, well, that's only for critical hits, though, right? The uh, I think I think it applies everywhere. I don't know. I know he's 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 unconscious and he's wounded one right now, but yeah. I, I don't think he's wounded two unless it's specifically a critical hit that takes him down. I think. Uh, well, let's let's let's, let's just let's just be lenient. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the dragon. Look it up. Unleashes that devastating fury. Uh, oh, good, and it recharges. <laughs> uh, can't use their breath weapon again for one round. Okay, uh, so gonna recharge. Um, that was his full turn. Kira. Uh, well, I don't think Kira has really any option but to uh, zap Valeros with some healing. Uh, Which would be a little different since she took a feat. All right, that's sixteen hit points back. Right. Okay. He heals. Oh, he's All badly right. injured. Um, he's probably prone, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, he's also okay. sorry. He's also wounded one now. I, I should have said dying one before, but he's he's now yeah. wounded one. So he's prone. He's flat footed and he's wounded. One. Uh, can you unpause, please? Oh, sorry, I didn't even realize I did that. And, uh... Last thing, I think she will move close to Valeros. And that's her turn. Alright. Melkis? Okay. I I kind of wanted to, to try to mark him for death, the, the dragon, but it will take my whole turn, and I think that will become very dangerous now to just spend my whole turn on that. Uh, instead, I will try to uh, identify him as a creature to use my uh, mastermind ability mm. to, m to make him flat-footed. All right, go ahead and make that check. I've got the I've got the DCs to recall knowledge about him. I assume that's what you use, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is, would that be uh, nature or arcana? Oh, um, it's arcana. That's not a skill that I'll use, but I will try. Um, I will reroll that for my hero point. Oh, okay, hero point. Because, I mean, it is an important role right now. <laughs> oh no. Classic. Okay. Classic hero point. Okay. I will just shoot him then. 
All right, just shoot. You don't need to know anything about this dragon. Yeah. Just shoot it. Oh, Ooh. apparently you don't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Hell? Two points of damage. Oh, man, you really wanted to, to get the crit on that. Uh, get the... You have to sneak attack on that. Yeah. Well, you've uh, you've put a you put a dent in it at least. You see the arrow go flying up and just stick in its hide. Swings its head down to look at you. Anything else? Uh, I think I will look at him defiantly and re and reload. Okay, Ezrin. Uh, can I find the cover in this mushroom? Can you find cover? Because there's some, there's some kind of cover, right? Yes, these like mushrooms are very large. You could easily duck down beside them and use the take cover action. That's what I'm going to do as I, not cowardly, but strategically poke my head out, reach out a hand, and uh, leash ray of frost. Keep forgetting to target. So. Uh, let's see, Ray of Frost, uh, a fourteen to hit. It's AC. That is a miss. The frost shoots over its head as it ducks and dips around the mushroom tops. Anything else? My back is still cracking. No, that's my three action. All right, Valorous, you're down. You're up. I'm down. Now I'm up again. I'll uh, stand up um, as a move action or as as an action. So he's 15 feet up, or it is 15 feet up. He is. There are a bunch of mushrooms around. Um, could I like climb a series of mushrooms to get kind of to his level? You could try to climb up the mushrooms. They, some of the mushrooms are as high as 10 feet. Uh, mm -hmm. And you could give me an athletics check to try and climb up them. They're a little uh, slippery looking. Okay. Um, these symbols for the tabs just don't seem to make sense to me. I can never yeah. find the right tab. Okay. Um, I'm not complaining. 17. That is unfortunately not enough for you to scale the mushroom. You start climbing up, but it's kind of slippery and slick, and you just slide back down. Okay. Um, then this time I will take cover as my third action. All right. Well, the dragon's ire and the dragon's eye seems to have been drawn by Melkis, who dared to strike it, and it flaps and flaps and comes diving down towards him right over the top of this mushroom and then down to ground level. It's now flapping just five feet above the ground. Or actually, I suppose it's... Yeah, it's five feet above the ground. Um, so that it can strike out at him in a draconic frenzy, uh, which lets it... Do multiple attacks. Here we go. First up, a tail strike. It lashes out with its tail. Oh, but that's only a 14 to hit you, Melkus. Well, it just so happens that my new armor class is 18, so... Ooh, all right. Uh, in that case... You sidestep the tail, but it's quick to lash out with those hind claws. Oh, a critical miss. And then another miss. So it just is lashing out at you wildly. It seems to be in a fervor, in a fury, and none of its attacks are landing. Kira. With oddly grace, um, Melkis seems to be weaving between attacks of this frenzied beast. Like... Very nice. I think Kira is going to step next to Valeros and she's going to put a hand on his 
longsword and say a prayer. Wow, okay. Cool. Uh -huh. And that's the unusual longsword. The unusual longsword. So, so now it will be uh, uh, magical for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but the extra weapon damage is pretty awesome. All right. Nelkis, you dodged the dragon's attacks, and now it's your turn. Yeah. <clears throat> and apparently, unfortunately, I will have to uh, spend one of my actions to draw my short sword uh, in order to attack it. I, I'm not sure I need. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure I can try to identify it again, especially after the universe gave me a hint that that's not going to be the case. <laughs> so I'm going to draw my one of my plus ones longsword and use a, one of my actions to try and strike it. All right. Uh, come on, my all my quick actions broke. Break one. Oh, that is a oh, miss. Oh, whoa. Okay, strike two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Melkis. Maybe click critical, and now this this is better. The gods are with you today. 12 points of damage on that crit. You definitely draw blood this time. Mm -hmm. Now imagine and if I could I... sneak attack on that, huh? <clears throat> <laughs> Ezrin! Uh, if I cast Ray of Frost, I target one creature, so I have no chance of hitting allies, right? Right. But the dragon being close. I'm gonna do acid splash instead. How do I target it again? Is that your highest level spell? <laughs> no, nope. I think you want to actually go, go nuclear. Yeah, on this guy. I have to move because otherwise I might hit friendly. I'm gonna cast magic missile. All How right. do I target? Thing? Uh, you double right click on it. Should do the job. Uh, yep. And when you click cast, yeah, you just need to do that three times. Of course, the dragon cannot defend against magic missile. Nine. Yes. Ooh, nice. Yeah. 14 points of damage. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Almost maxed out. Awesome. Yikes. All right. I think that's your whole turn, though. All three actions to magic okay. missile blasting into the dragon, even as Melkus is stabbing up at it, and you just see it recoiling and shaking, flapping its wings, trying to stay in the air. Valoros, you're up. Valorous is like he's bullying, he's he's uh, angry, he's he's stepping out from behind that mushroom trunk, and he's kind of like he's just he he's he's almost dragging his shield and his sword is definitely scratching over the floor and he takes like two steps forward completely ignoring his defense and with just a single really powerful swing he just tries to strike the dragon using power attack, which is two actions for my first attack. So one action to move, two actions to attack, and it all comes down to this roll, so please, please. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wait, dragon. Wait, is, is it flat foot? Do we flank it? Yeah, no? No, no, you're not flanking. It's above you anyway, so it wouldn't. it still wouldn't be flanking. You have to be on opposite side. Oh, it wouldn't side. be flanking. Okay, so if yeah. I if I were to go here instead of up there, it still wouldn't be flanking. Still wouldn't be flanking. Only if you were on top of the mushroom. Um, okay. Could I do that with that same move action? You would need a, another athletics check. 
Okay. This it doesn't is... say the athletics check is an action, so I suppose it is considered part of your movement. No. Oh, you're just okay. Flipping well. around on it. All right. Well, that was uh, my turn then. Okay. Shit. One mighty blow, but the dragon senses a death blow coming and swoops out of the way and is enraged, furied by everyone hurting it so much it's used to getting fed tasty fish treats. So instead, it lets out another loud roar, which turns into another blast of dangerous breath. This time, at the two who are being so vexing to it, that that definitely also targets Melkus, in spite of <laughs> in spite of what that says. <laughs> Um, circling around Melkus. <laughs> somehow not hitting Mel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am going to need both Melkus and Ezrin to make that dexterity saving throw. Let me post the uh, uh, the breath weapon again. So I I had already cast Mage Arm. Does that automatically add to it, my it, AC? It doesn't doesn't help with the reflex save. It does it does increase your AC, but it does not help you with a reflex save. However, I do believe But I am on cover, cover. Yeah, I think that gives you a bonus. I remember. I mean, it would make sense. That's the purpose of cover. I am still gonna need the reflex save though. So I just roll regularly? Yeah, you can just you can click on it right on the sidebar or yeah. from your sheet. I thought maybe I thought maybe being in cover would give me a bonus. It does. I think it does. Um, but I don't think it's enough to get you to a pass. Um, I it's cover. A, it's a plus four circumstance bonus, which is only a twenty one, unfortunately, and the DC is twenty four. So, uh, Melkus failed, but at least he didn't critically fail like Valoros did. So let's see the 5d6 poison damage. 21 Oof. points to each of you. Yeah, GG. Is anyone still standing? E well, nope. barely. Oh, <laughs> he's still up. Okay. Um, the dragon is going to flap its wings now to gain some altitude. It doesn't like all these people swinging swords down low, so it's going to flap and rise up into the air and scoot over Melkus's head as it comes up to 15 feet again. And also moves over here, shifting away. Now, Valorous, I do believe you have an offer. You can take an attack of opportunity as it leaves. Okay, I will do that. Um, well, that doesn't count my power tech bonus. But I still have the magic weapon thing going. Ooh! <laughs> nice. Oh my I god. Um. And uh, you actually can add an additional two points of damage onto that, uh, since it was a critical hit, uh, as the, the smoking sword seems to sear its flesh as uh, you land the hit. I, I think it's accounted for there. Oh, is it? Yeah, it, it says oh, there. Oh, it does. Oh, it yeah. does. It says plus one five. Okay, it's all factored in. Great. Um, in that case, it is 24 points of damage, which is a... Very, very effective strike. Um, it's still alive, but you can see it trailing blood as it flaps away, screeching now in a combination of rage and pain, and maybe even a hint of fear. <laughs> All right, we can do Kira. this. <clears throat> Uh, Kyra is doing some mental trigonometry. <laughs> uh, oh, but she can't get there. Uh, 
Um, I guess she will just tag Ezran with a heal spell from a distance. Yeah, he's just in range. I guess this, and it'll be this much healing for Ezran. Nice. And All right. then uh, she's left with one act. Um, one act that she is going to use on... Uh, yeah, she's going to use to cast Guidance on Valeros. Guidance on Valeros. Plus one status bonus to attack rolls, perception checks, saving throws, or skill checks the target attempts. Very nice. <clears throat> Melkis? Okay. Uh, Melkis. Uh, I will drop one, my, so, my short sword, reload my hand crossbow, and once that's done, he will <coughs> raise his shaking head up, 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 upstairs <coughs> or upwards, uh, and narrow his eyes, trying to uh, to fight through the through the mist that clouds his mind after an incredible pain of acid damage, and he will pull the trigger. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I did not oh. think you were going to hit that. Four more points of damage. You put another bolt into the thing. It uh, it shudders and it drops in altitude for a second, but it beats its wings even harder to stay in the air. Mm. Yep. The milk is grits his teeth. <laughs> and that's his turn. All right. Ezrin, you've just been roused back to consciousness by uh, by uh, Kira, but you're still lying on the ground. You should be at 11. 11. Right. Uh, and rising, barely being able to stand on my feeble legs. Reach out a hand and magic crystal. And a third one. Uh, each one weaker than the last. So he's oh, he's lying on the ground, and he's like, technically, if you're magic missileing for three actions, you're not even standing up. You're just still prone yeah. there, just blasting magic up as well as you can. Lunch, yeah. Each bolt lances out. Hits the dragon. One, two, three. A total of ten points of damage. And the dragon, even as it's trying to maintain its altitude, as it takes this final blow, it goes crashing down into the mushrooms, knocking them over and uh, falling to the ground. Dead. Awesome. We slayed a dragon. Yes. Okay, guys, I have to make a hard exit. I'm sorry, but the kids are, are like just exploding with yeah. madness. Thank, yeah, thank, so thank you so much. This was so much fun. Um, and the kids. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. See you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. All right. The dragon Perfect. lies bleeding out on the ground, its last ragged breaths escaping its mouth. I wasn't sure we were, we were going to make it out of that one. I, it, with, it is... With, uh... with Dragon's final breath, I mark him for death. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, well, I will, I will wrap this up as well, but I will give you the Cliff Notes version. Um, there is another tunnel that you might see leaving, leading out of this chamber. If you keep following it, you'll see that it eventually leads you up out of the depths under Otari uh, into uh, 
out of a small cave that is just outside of town. Um, but Valoros did spot the large pile of treasure in this room before you go, and uh, it is indeed sitting there awaiting you. Uh, to the victors go the spoils. 429 copper pieces, 63 silver pieces, 18 gold, and to top it all off, a single giant emerald atop the heap that vaguely looks like a dragon's eye. Mm. Mm. Will this, does this adventure keep going? This is the conclusion of this adventure, uh, with a lot of courage and a bit of luck. Uh, you're able to survive your encounters with the menaces under Otari, the kobolds, the spiders, the other various threats, and of course their pet, the dragon wormling, and return to town as triumphant heroes. Tamalee feels truly relieved to learn that the last remnants of the danger are swept away, especially after she learns just how dangerous it truly was. Over the coming weeks, news of your heroish, your heroic exploits will make their way through the town, and soon enough, these budding adventurers will find themselves with numerous opportunities for more work. But that is something that maybe we will address at a later time. Well, that was fun. That 